Stabilization is needed because propane just by nature presents its challenges in trying to transfer it from one pressure vessel to the other. When you look at a pressure vessel, you'll see that part of it is contained with liquid space and the other part is vapor space. Now the amount of vapor pressure we have inside the tank is directly related to what outside temperature is. And propane is going through a constant change or a phase change from liquid to vapor depending upon what the outside temperature is um, to get back into its vapor state or into a liquid state. Pumping in a, efficiently in a propane system, we're mainly going to focus on that repressurization of the vapor. So if you were to picture inside of a propane tank, we're going to take liquid out of one tank and put it into the other. As we start to move that liquid level down, we lose vapor pressure. In order to get that vapor pressure back, the propane undergoes a natural process of boiling, where the liquid now becomes a vapor. And it does it at a slow, steady rate until it gets up to what vapor pressure is supposed to be based on the outside temperature. Now the problem that creates for us when we're trying to pump is that these bubbles in the boiling start to form in the bottom of the tank, which is right where our pump is. And it's very similar to say if you were going to boil a pot of water, you see the bubbles start to form on the bottom. And then they start to work their way up through the system. Now, Propane likes to be in what I call a happy place, unchanged for pumping, where it likes to be in a liquid state and be moved in a liquid state down the line. We do take that whatever pressure is on the propane and we multiply it by about 100 PSI through the pump and down the system. As these bubbles start to form, we will displace liquid volume in the pump with vapor and it cuts down on our efficiency. Now, the rate at which we pull the product out of the tank is a lot faster than how propane can naturally boil and restore that vapor pressure inside the tank. So what happens is we have a domino effect here where we start creating more and more boiling, more and more vapor bubbles on the bottom of the tank, which then take up capacity inside of our pump. As we get too many of these bubbles inside the pump and we start to create this 100 pounds of pressure on top, top of it, the bubbles actually do something where they actually implode. And that's a process that we call cavitation. When we go into cavitation, now we start seeing some adverse reactions that really compound themselves. Flow rate begins to drop, noise is associated with the process. Our pump, we have sliding veins or blades in them that spin and rotate. They begin to bounce off of the liner. The pump is no longer lubed as well with vapor as it would be with liquid. And a lot of times we're contingent upon that liquid being there to make a seal work on the mechanical seal of the pump. So that's, the, that's one of the problems that's created in, the, uh, in why stabilization is needed. Now, in terms of a hydraulic system and how it can benefit and help our process, is again, propane likes to be in that happy state, unchanged. And when we take a PTO shaft, we're generally going to have a knuckle or a U-joint in there. And we're going to do a couple of things with that, with that PTO shaft. We're going to side load the pump, the bearings, the seals. It can cause some premature wear there. But now, if we look at just by nature of a PTO shaft, the U-joint or knuckle in it, there's an oscillation effect with that. We're going to have more speed on one part of the rotation and less on the other. Now we compound that with all these, with cavitation and pressure spikes in the system from those bubbles imploding. Now we're even worse off than we were before. One simple cure that we could use would be to take the tank that we're using, that we're pumping out of and the tank we're pumping into, and connect the vapor spaces together, either by a hose or a pipe or something of that nature. Then what would happen is as, as the liquid level would drop in one tank rise in the other, the vapor would then exchange between the two tanks and it would keep that propane in that happy state and we'd have less boiling going on, we'd keep more pure liquid going through the pump. Unfortunately, we can't do that because when we're in metered delivery service like we are with these propane trucks, it's, it's not legal to do because there's no good way of measuring how much vapor has been exchanged between the two. The other, it creates an inefficiency in the process by having to hook up another hose which might be 150 feet away from the truck, an added cost with uh, hose reel, plumbing valves, and, and things of that nature. What, what makes the 500P an excellent piece of equipment for this application is that it combines two inefficiencies 
of, of each process, the propane delivery process as well as the heat that's built up inside of the hydraulic system with the fluids. So what we're doing there is we're taking propane, about a gallon and a half a minute out of our propane pumping system, and we're putting it through a heat exchanger that has two circuits in it. One of them has the propane flowing through it, the other one has hydraulic fluid flowing through it. Now the hydraulic fluid has heat in it from going through the system, through the pump, the motor, comes back warm. We take that propane, liquid propane coming off of the pump and we put those two together through a, several plates, exchange that heat, that liquid propane now flashes, becomes vapor, and vapor pressure now is restored back up inside the tank. And it, again, it helps with the natural process of the boiling, but it limits it. So it tricks it essentially into thinking that we have a vapor hose connected. Another piece of equipment that we use to help with the stabilization process is the 100P. It works very similar to the 500P where we're still using the propane and running it through a heat exchanger. But on the other side, we're using a media that's got a little more heat to it. it approximately 165 degrees of the engine coolant will run through one side of the heat exchanger and liquid propane on the other, again, to flash the vapor, create even more vapor pressure inside of the tank. In a, in a lot of cases, we will be making a delivery of propane, which it's a very large drop, meaning it's 2,000 gallons or more. In that case, we need, to, we need to restore a lot more vapor pressure than we might be able to do with just one of the systems. So we might have to use them in tandem to do that. Generally, we find that when we use those systems in tandem, we can support about 100 gallons per minute and keep the tank stabilized. Uh, as a standalone system, the 500P, we generally see rates stabilized in between 65 and 60 gallons a minute. Again, depending upon how big our delivery or our drop is that we're making.